So that first uh, African American dude, his name was Irving, and apparently I loved him. I thought he was the bee's knees. I was a little kid. I don't remember any of this. My dad broke into the house, smashed uh, a wine bottle that was being used, you know, to hold a candle, and uh, slit his throat with it. And because it was in Winthrop at the time, that was um, that was kind of hush hushed because my father was in the auxiliary police and he was part mafia. So nothing was ever done, and Irving disappeared. I mean, he didn't die, but he, he like, that's it, I'm out, see ya. I got my throat slashed for trying to be with you, and nope. I ended up meeting him years later at community college. He was working in the print shop, and I heard all these great things about him and how, how dirty he was done by my dad and my mom. So I wanted to say hi to him and, you know, tell him that I really... Uh, appreciated how great he was even though I don't remember it but uh, everybody told me so second I walked up and he recognized who I looked like the fear in his eyes my god I felt uncomfortable just standing there I, I, was, I felt like saying I'm sorry uh, I didn't even do anything but just looking like my father the way I do I felt like apologizing and uh, I greeted him, and I told him how great he was, and thanked him, and, and wanted him to know that I was doing okay. I'm in college now. And he very quickly, okay, thank you, thank you. He kind of rushed me out the door kind of thing, and I never bothered him again, the poor guy. And when my mother started dating Pepe, uh, Pepe had the, the Jehovah's Witness thing, and I don't know if you know about the Jehovah's Witness thing, but... They believe that they are the chosen people, like the Israelites. They have been anointed. And uh, they believe in the persecution thing, that one day what happened to the Jews will happen to them. And it did happen to some of them back in World War II, because Jehovah's Witnesses were also gassed. And so there was this whole feeling of, I walk in the arms of the Lord Jehovah, and so... I accept whatever punishment the world deigns to give me because I am stronger than that because of Jehovah, something like that. Anyway, my father went running up to Pepe to kick his ass, and most men would have run screaming. But Pepe just stood there with his Bible under his arm and greeted my father and welcomed him to join the Jehovah's Witnesses. My father didn't know what to do. It's like a predator. If you run away from a predator, the predator will attack. But if you just stand your ground, I guess the predator's like, oh, I don't know what to do with you. Long story short, my father ended up joining the Jehovah's Witnesses too. <laughs> so I was raised in that. We couldn't celebrate birthdays because Jesus, uh, his birthday was never celebrated after the first one. I'm rolling my eyes, I know you can't see that. And we couldn't celebrate Christmas because Christmas is a pagan holiday. Jesus wasn't born on December 25th. The Christmas tree is a pagan symbol. Blah, da, blah, da, blah. Halloween, pagan, pagan, pagan Satanist. Thanksgiving is, you, you couldn't celebrate that because that was a secular holiday. You can only celebrate the, the days that God tells you to celebrate, which were basically uh, Passover and that whole Last Supper thing. You know, this is my body, this is my blood kind of deal. And there were, there were no symbols in the church. You never bowed to anything because of the idolatry thing. There was no cross. Very, very different from... Uh, from other religions, like the, you know, Catholicism, where they got the Jesus hanging on the cross thing. This, no, no, no. Oops, let me go this way. I have no idea where I'm going. I'm just randomly turning. So you can imagine how popular I was in the third grade when I told all my friends there is no Santa. It's a lie. It's a pagan holiday. <laughs> I couldn't celebrate anything. It's against my religion. I couldn't even salute the flag in the morning. Because that was a secular 
uh, organization. So I had to just stand and, and not face the flag, just stand facing front. And I used to think of myself as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I will not bow. Shouldn't force a kid to, to go through that kind of thing. Brainwashing. So by the time I was 12, uh, my mother's marriage to Pepe had fallen apart because he had cheated on her and sired another kid with a Puerto Rican lady. And that kid actually turned out to be awesome. His name is Chris, and he's so successful and so awesome. But my mother punched Pepe in the face. The blood sat on that wallpaper in the downstairs the entire time I lived there. My mother never washed it off. That was kind of her thing, like, yeah. Okay, Ma. And Pepe left. And apparently we had been living in stark poverty. Welfare, you know, government cheese kind of thing. The whole time he was with us. And he was working at GE in a good job. And crying poor mouth. He was sucking money away. So he bought a house after they divorced. Because he had all the secret money. And the divorce agreement with my mother was she got to keep the house that we were in until all the kids grew up and moved out at which time she had to sell it and split it with Pepe so there was always this fear that Pepe would come swooping in if any one of us you know, if we all left so he took Kettler and Ketna with him And they moved across town to the other side of Lynn. And I still, you know, hung out with them because they're my brother and my sister. I loved them. Ketna not so much because, you know, Ketna being a girl, you know, what do you do with a girl when you're, you know, eight, nine years old, ten years old? It was me and Ketna. We used to ride bikes all the time. We had a great time. And uh, Kettler's cousins became my cousins. So Betlin, Ninson, and Steph uh, um, Stanley, we all hung out together. We had a lot of fun. Oh, look at this. I did not know this was here. I just decided to take a bunch of random turns, and now I'm in places I've... I think I've seen that before. Yes, yes, I have seen this before. On a random run once. When I was a little kid, um... Every time I'd bring friends home for the first time to meet my family, they would always be completely shocked. Like, like oh my God. They, they, you know, you got white mother, right? Then you got black father. Then you got black children, white children, brown children. The look on their faces priceless they didn't know what to think sometimes they'd say you know are they adopted it was never Mike are you adopted it's always are they adopted like no 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 we're and Kettler used to put his arm around me and say, laugh and say yeah we're twins <laughs> people did not know what to make of my mixed family I learned some French and some Haitian Creole so I was a misfit in school. I didn't fit in with any real crowd. We were pretty unique. When I was 12 years old, my mother asked me if uh, I wanted to stay in the Jehovah's Witnesses because she was disfellowshipped. She had uh, moved in with a guy, the guy, one of the tenants that she rented to. She rented rooms. Uh, they fell in love and he moved downstairs to live with her and so she got this fellowship for living in sin after she was baptized as a Jehovah's Witness. And they said, you can come to the meetings for six months, but nobody can talk to you. And then after six months, then limited contact and counseling and all this. And she said, nope, I'm out. And then she asked me if I wanted to go back. And she said, nope. I said, no, 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 thank you. I wanted no part of that. And this guy, Dickie Curry, used to come over to the house all the time. 
to uh, to do Bible studies, and I, I didn't want to, and I, I tried to talk talk him out of it, like, you know, I don't really feel comfortable, I don't really want to do this, and he kept kind of pushing himself on me. So finally one day I just didn't, sh I didn't go home. I went to my friend's house and watched out the window as the guy waited for me for three hours outside. I have never been down this road before. And a lot of my family stayed in it. My dad was in it for a long time. Uh, my sister Debbie is still in it. My sister Ketna is still in it. And Pepe is still in it. And every time we talk to them, and you know, like me and my brother Mark, whenever we talk to them, they always uh, try to get us to go back to the truth, is what they call it. They don't want us to die in Armageddon because they want us to go to the new system of things. Oh, goodness. And I understand that's their belief, and, and for my sister Debbie, it saved her life, and I've got no problem with that. But for me, nope. Well, thank you, and I don't want to be pressured either. And I think Debbie, uh, you know, she laid off on it, which is good for the most part. <laughs> 